Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And the Lane Casa, we have gotten a lot of moisture, summer rains. You can count on it in northern Arizona. We never quite know how much, but there's always going to be some moisture. And so this is a good moisture year, and you're seeing the plants respond. And so I've I've got brand new, my my autumn sage. This is uh, Salvia gregii is the Latin name. It's a little shrub about knee high, kind of ball shaped. It was struggling in the heat, struggling, struggling, scorching. Now, about three weeks after the scorching, it just went woof, took off, and is now covered in flowers and buds. It doesn't take very long. But I had fertilized those plants because I knew they're tough. As soon as they got any respite, any kind of help from nature, a little bit of clouds, just, just cloud cover, they would have sprung to life. And so and they're tr- truly spectacular. The other one that's a companion to that is Russian sage. There's a big blue shrub. Oh, about hip high or so. It's blue or lavender or, you know, I'm, uh, it's got a purpley kind of blue color to it. But it's got this spiky, sagey, almost uh, a lavender kind of look to it, but much larger. That's another one. It just took off. Now, it was blooming before. But now it's nice and full and looks it's just striking, stunning. So from now through really October, so you've got a good, strong two and a half months of growing season left. And so this is the time to really get the most out of this is almost a better bloom time than spring. Because the things that are so beautiful are so striking, they're so big and so full and so bright uh, they get muted a little bit only because the only reason I hesitate is because there's so much green that sometimes they, they uh, in the spring, you watch a lilac come into bloom and it's all by itself. It's competing with nothing. Uh, but now when a crepe myrtle goes into bloom, it's got all this other green amount around it. And so it, I, I think they're brighter. They're, they, they, the fragrance is equal to that of roses and lilacs or spring bloomers. Uh, but I think there's just a lot going on in the yard. You need to have some of those summer bloomers to really enjoy the rest of the season. Uh, you're you're starting to see, you're not starting, you don't want to see fall color on your plants. I'm hearing a couple folks say their aspens and maples are showing a little stress. They're showing some yellow or red showing up early. That's a full month and a half early. That means more than likely, just kind of an 80% of all issues in the garden are water related. And so if you've got trees or shrubs that are turning fall color too early, this is summer still. We're a month away, just over five weeks away from, from autumn, official start of autumn. You should not be seeing fall color on your plants or any kind of muted yellow off color. It should be rich, thick, green. And if it's not doing that, you've got it probably a water issue. And so they're getting too much water now. So they went from, oh my gosh, I can't water them enough. They're scorching. It's 105 degrees. Oh my gosh, what are, my plants don't know what to do, to they're drowning. So it's a water issue. So you need to tweak back that irrigation some. So you bumped it up to every three, four days of watering your trees and shrubs during that heat. It was hard to keep things going. And now we've got, I think I've had over a half inch of rain in, in, in our gardens, and I'm not in, in the strongest rain area. And so some of you got much more. And so those, if you put, if you're still watering every three days, plus two good strong rains this week, it's too much. So the plants will stress out and you'll see this coloration come onto it. And it's easy to correct, just throttle back the irrigation. Or if you see the rain here, just skip a cycle. Let it go. Let the let nature do it for you. And then you should green those things up. And so if you've not fertilized, so so it's usually an iron or magnesium. Usually it's iron, sulfur kind of, kind of uh, a problem. If they're turning color, your pH is crept up too high because you're watering too much. There's a whole lot of chemistry you could go into. 
But basically, that's it. Give it a good, strong fertilizer and some fast-acting iron. It should green it just, just right up, just like that. I mean, within, within a week, nice and green. So, But if you let it go, it's going to become worse. And that plant will be naked way before everything else even thinks it's fall yet. So it's stressed out. It's They're putting themselves to bed. So don't let that happen. Uh, another thing that I'm doing right now in, in my yard is I'm starting to cut back pretty strongly those things that uh, have grown so much. So the hedgerows, evergreens, vines. Oh my gosh. Got a kibias and honeysuckle that are going nuts. And so I'm starting to trim those things back now. So Eliagnus, boxwood, red tipotinia, they've gotten so big that I'm going to trim those things back now. So they've got time to recover and start to flush new growth before winter hits. So by the time it's December 1, sometime in December, it gets cool enough where the plants kind of lock in and whatever you have, that's what you stay with through winter, through the end of February. And so I'm trying to have the perfect shape. I want to lock into this beautiful, hedged, neat, tidy, controlled, not wild thing that every time I walk by it till next spring, it wants to grab me and, and to kind of hug me and throw me into the back of the, into this huge vine. So I'm trying to control that. So I'm just shaping those things, fertilizing them, and then they'll grow, they'll flush a little bit more growth and they'll just be this beautiful hedge right through winter. So it's an opportune time. This end of monsoon, the right before autumn kind of hits, this is kind of a window when you, when you trim and clean things up, keep them looking good. And then they'll, they'll stay that way right to winter. If you wait, they can have this, you, you, you'll see the uh, stems are just cut back. You'll see branches that are open. It just has this, I've just been pruned back look. Well, that's fine if it's right at the end of, of, of winter, right before the spring flush grow, go, goes. But if you want it to look, if you cut it back earlier than that, let's say January, December, November, uh, it's going to look, it's going to look like it's been hacked on for three, four months. If you do it now, it has time to recover, cover up those prune marks, have fresh new foliage, goes into winter and it keeps its form. Just kind of some, some help. I mean, it, it'll, it'll make a difference, really. Another one, if you're trying to keep your fruit trees down. So the, the peach harvest is, is almost over. So I'm having peaches for breakfast several times this week. They're so delicious. They melt in your mouth. Oh my gosh. Just they're, my mouth's watering thinking about it. Um, when those plants are done uh, fruiting, you've got the last fruit off, go ahead and trim them back. It's called summer pruning. I don't think we prune back our, our fruit trees. If you want to keep them down to size smaller, this is the time right after you're done harvesting the plums, the, 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 the peaches, apricots, nectar, pe uh, cherries, prune those things back to keep them down to size, especially if you want to keep them down at like fence height or maybe eight foot tall. The secret is let them just keep them trimmed. Now the heavy pruning is done in January, February, March, but the suckers, that new elongated growth that happened this last spring and summer, you trim that back to keep the growth down where you want it to keep it shaped. So I do this every, about sometime in August, very first part of September, I'm trimming things back because yeah, I've got several fruit trees in containers. I don't want them to get too big. If they get too large, they blow over in the wind. Well, that's no good. Then they're too big to harvest, and they're too big for proportion for the for the pot size. They, they overtake their space in the patio. And so I strategically, right after the I'm done harvesting the peaches or the fruit, I'll trim it back to. Uh, for me, it's about eight foot tall. So I stand up on the bucket. I'm a six foot two guy, and as far as I can reach, about eight feet. That's nothing else gets above that. I just trim it back, and it's been that way for 15 years. It's still growing. Eventually, it's going to grow out of that pot, but dang, it looks good and it produces fruit every year. You can do that on your fence line, on your orchard. You can keep things controlled by cutting back those summer suckers on your fruit trees, cutting back your evergreens. So it keeps them so they don't get this wild look. They're more trimmed and manicured. Trimming back those vines so they don't take over. Now is a good time to trim some of those things. 
We've got a lot in store for you. Let's go to your Q&A section with Lisa Watersling coming in right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Hi, Kenneth Waters with our Monster Monsoon Sale, our only sale of the year. Truckloads of fresh autumn maple, aspen, and spruce have just arrived, and we need room, so summer plants must go. Perennials, trees, shrubs, even pottery must go, and it's worth your while with plant sales at 25, 45, even 65% off. It's Waters' only sale of the year at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love great plants at sale prices, they love to shop. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Ah, Welcome, Lisa. Well, thank you. Yeah, Good so, to be here. So you spent like, I think, uh, what did we spend? Five hours? Yeah, by college? Lifetime, of the week. felt yeah. like a lifetime. <laughs> it was dress rehearsals for Dancing with the Stars, and it was a bit grueling. So the dress rehearsal, yes. a lot of couples, they just weren't ready. So, um, but we were, and a run through, did pretty good. Did you great. guys were ready, and you yeah. hopped through it. And... I don't like going to things unprepared. Yes. I want to be polished and kind of know what I'm doing so the guys can just focus on spotlights or the... Yeah. audio entrance or when to hit the button or mm -hmm. the professional, the polish piece, not, right. Oh no. Well, how do we get all these people on stage? <laughs> anyway, just, what are they gonna stand? it was, it beat me up a little bit. I yeah. was kind of, well, you've been like, practicing a lot <laughs> getting ready and we'll know next week. We'll have to announce next week how everything went. Or maybe we won't because we just didn't win anything. So <laughs> oh, you win um, something. Yeah. Well, I hope so. Best my looking dear. guy. Thank you. I like the sound. That's good enough for me, so honey. You've been working it a lot. You put a lot of energy into this, and everybody wants to know yeah. what you've learned and what your favorite dance step is. And, you know, are you going to be hitting the disco techs now? Disco techs. We're going back to the 1970s, <laughs> early 80s. <laughs> They're still out there. Uh, I'd like to know where. <laughs> you went to Spain? <laughs> Morocco. Maybe. Uh, so, so Dancing with the Stars. I'm not a dancer. I, I do like to dance. I've got a groove. I like to come to your after party or your wedding. It's kind of fun. I'm the guy that goes on the floor. It just enjoys it. Mm -hmm. But that's not work. That's just play and fun. Right. And it's a workout. It's fun. It's active. Uh, this is like more polish. You have to know your steps. It's not you can't just like wing it. You can't wing it. You gotta actually know. <laughs> and then you do get partnered with a real professional, I mean, Carrie mm -hmm. Hughes. She's actually a dance instructor. She's very choreographer. She's very professional. Mm -hmm. And so I did learn a few moves, but I don't know if any of those carry over to after parties, weddings, or anytime <laughs> you and I go out. I'm not, I'm not sure. It was kind of bigger Broadway, showy yeah. kind of stuff. So right. it relates more to theater, drama, that than it does to right. uh, professional or to personal dancing for, but for you and I. At the very least, when you do go to that discotheque, you can wear your sequins shirt. <laughs> Yeah, your light up hat and your light up shoes. You're, just, you're giving things away for those that are maybe coming on Saturday. Oh, so, they've um, all seen you. Well, I have been around town on my for first basically four yes. months. That's the brand. I'm a branding guy. I'm mm -hmm. a marketing PR branding guy. Blue sequence. The people, if I didn't show up in it, people go, Ken, what happened? Are you? <laughs> I went to the I went to the Fourth of July rodeo. And I just had my cowboy stuff, my oh. buckle and my big hat and my right. shirt. I look like a cowboy. And people are going by, hey, Ken, where's your sequin shirt? And we're like, cowboys don't wear sequins. <laughs> Not that kind of cowboy. I, I just cowboy don't wear. Rhinestone cowboy. Remember that song? Talk was that a guy or a gal? What it was, was that? a guy. Rhinestone cowboy. Oh, okay. Dude, I think Robert Redford played. Yes. We are dating ourselves back to the 1970s. <laughs> we are that. We're the. We feel old. Anyway, we should go to Garden Quest. It's okay. three minutes wasted on, uh, well, let's I don't do know that. what. Well, Steve has a question. He's out in Prescott Valley. He has some lovely roses, but they've kind of petered out, haven't done much lately. 
uh, kind of attributed it to the heat, but he's going, yeah. you know, how sure. do I get these things to bloom again? Sure. So, so Prescott Valley, Prescott, any of the highlands, the central highlands area, this is the same. So the, the, the roses have pretty much two big flushes of flowers. Even your continual roses or ever blooming roses, they've got two really big shows of flowers, spring and fall. And then even the ever bloomers, they'll, they'll put on some, they have some flowers, but this this big show, like more flowers than foliage, that's spring and fall. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think the best showing, Steve, is in the fall. And so what you want to do is just TLC on those plants. You go through scorched leaves, get it back to size, prune it back a little bit, take the spent flowers or, or the old dead flowers, take those off. Mm -hmm. And generally you're going to take them off and go down a little bit farther, not just the flower, take it a little bit farther, get the, get the shrub to be down so that the, the roots that are underneath that plant can focus all of their energy onto more flowers. Mm -hmm. And it will be a count on it. I mean, we're talking 30, 40 days after you do that this weekend. 30, 40 days. What is that? That's uh, by September through October. It will be a spectacular rose. Mm -hmm. It'll probably hold those buds, flowers, colors through the first part of December. Yeah. It's amazing how long roses will hold. It might not be in full bloom when it's, you know, 20 degrees out in December, but it's going to have a bud there cracking color going, you know, like if it warms up, I just might bloom. I, I'm not sure yet. It's kind of inspiration. So that's how you do it. Prune it back. Fertilize would be really important because all the food that plant was using is gone. You have to, you're going to cut it back and force it to rebloom. It's going to take tremendous energy to do that. Give it some of the uh, rose I guess which one, which one <laughs> rose food with systemic. Generally I recommend right. when the aphids and the thrips are out, but really they aren't out in the fall. So you could almost just use the all purpose plant food. That cotton seed meal on that seven, four, four all purpose is like magic to roses. It really gets big flowers and fragrance, but either one, Steve, come see us. We can, we can walk you through it. If you want more, that's any of us with roses, trim them, clean them back, fertilize them, pick all those brown spent, leaves off just take a few minutes yeah. and and just primp and prune them and kind of touch them yeah. and roses will respond with uh, with vigor yeah i noticed our rose at the edge of the driveway there yeah. it's gotten huge but yeah it's just sitting there looking at me it needs to yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah we need to trim it back all right next question is from joe he says i saw a plant growing on a fence with a big orange flower big orange blossom Wants to know what it is and will it grow in Paulden? Oh, yeah, Joe, sure. Now, Joe, they make a <laughs> camera phone. You can like snap a picture, bring it in and let us know what it is. So by word, just a text or an email, I'm assuming just because you're looking at it right now, mm -hmm. that trumpet vine, it could be there's a honeysuckle that's red like that, but the trumpet vine is a bigger red flower. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guessing it's trumpet vine. We're famous for trumpet vine up here. Uh, hummingbirds love it. They just love trumpet vine. So I'm guessing it's that. This is a very large vine. It grows very quickly. So we're talking, it'll go from hip high to like two stories high in a season or two seasons, maybe. Uh, it'll ground cover. You can actually spread it across the ground. It will actually hold the ground in. Uh, erosion control up an embankment where, where maybe the rains of Washington. Or trumpet vine. It's a very good choice. Uh, yes, Steve or Joe. Which one? Are we on? Joe. <laughs> Joe. Joe. Yes. Paulden. It will grow in Paulden easily. Thrive out there. It is deciduous. That is, it'll lose its leaves in winter. So it'll be just kind of just there, but not there. Then it leafs out first part of spring and then it blooms with these huge flowers, usually starting in August through the end of the year. It's got an amazing long bloom cycle when other vines really, kind they, they kind of, they're, they're not going to look that good. Mm -hmm. So, and then it kind of ends the very last vine to look really great is Virginia creeper. Mm -hmm. That's the one that turns out fall bright, bright red, like fire engine red, really bright red. It's a native plant of here. So Arizona, Virginia creeper is native to Arizona. In fact, I would change the name to Arizona creeper, <laughs> but I think Virginia got to us first Probably. and named it, but it grows throughout this, this 
zone six, seven kind of type of gardens, wild. And so that means javelina, antelope, uh, deer out there. They're not going to, jackrabbits, they're not going to eat Virginia creeper, even in Paulden. So I think that's a good do question. Do they have jackrabbits in Paulden? Yeah, oh yeah, sure they really? do. Yeah, absolutely. And as you go up that hill, there, there's tons of them up there. I know there's rabbits, but I, didn't, I haven't seen jackrabbits around here forever. Well, yeah, maybe you ought to go to Paulden more often. <laughs> right, Paulden? Right, right, Joe? Jackalope. Anyway. <laughs> okay, Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. If you enjoy this show and would like to hear more, please subscribe to The Mountain Gardener wherever you like to listen to podcasts. And if you'd like even more garden tips, tricks, and helpful advice, please check out my website at watersgardencenter.com for classes, videos, and more or my online garden center at top10plants.com. Throughout the week, Lisa and I can be found here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion plants for August are radio red salvias, butterfly bush, and trumpeting vine. Large clusters of red and orange flowers create a dramatic show all season long with Waters Trumpet Vine. This vigorous vine thrives in heat and blooms profusely with neglect. Quickly covers large areas as a ground cover, spilling over retaining walls, screening a fence, or cloaking arbors. Guaranteed to attract more hummingbirds and only found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's Waters with two T's, GardenCenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. So this late summer, early fall, there's an opportunity for gardeners to landscape, especially if you need lots of plants, a lot of landscaping. This is a time where you can save money on that landscape budget. And here's what's going on and, and, and why that's the case. So there's really two times three maybe, where you can save substantial dollars on on your landscape plants. And it's when the seasonal changes happen at a garden center. So right now here at Waters Garden Center here in Prescott, we are shifting from summer to the fall and winter mix. And so we have harvested our junipers, spruce, pine, firs, cedar, cypress, evergreen stuff, red tip potinias, raphiliptus, all these silverberries, all these evergreen things are on their way. And so we need to liquidate or make room for this new crop of plants. And so a, a spruce tree is big. I mean, one plant could take up a square meter pretty easily, or square meter, square yard. <laughs> I must have been reading something European. Sorry about that. So a square yard. And so you need space between them to kind of peruse them and make them look good. So we've flown up to the farms and we've handpicked these, the most beautiful of the Christmas tree looking holiday plants. And so we're bringing those in getting ready for the holidays. The crepe myrtles, uh, there's hardly a lilac left. So all the spring things have been we, we need those to be in your yard, not at the garden center. We don't need those right now. We'll have 100, 200, well, hundreds and hundreds more next spring. But the few, the, the two dozen that are left, eh, take them home. They're done blooming. I've got plenty of Rose of Sharon that are in bloom that look good. So I'll, I'll sell those. We cleared those out. So as that season changes... You can take advantage of that. So we call it our Monster Monsoon Sale. It's basically our year-end summer clearance thing. It's not everything on sale. Come on. It's we still have brand new things just, just off the truck. The summer blooming perennials are over the top. They're glorious. But the older things, galardias that have kind of been with us for a month, eh, time for those to go because we've got beautiful mums coming. The, the asters are coming. There's things are coming. So this is a, a seasonal chance. Probably now through really Labor Day. The sooner, the sooner the better, because as soon as you hear about it, you can you can cherry pick off the best stuff. At the end, towards Labor Day, it starts to look 
a little tired. There's less op, there's less plants. They've been, we've cleared them out. And now we've got room. And so we have truck, literally semi loads of plants that will arrive of uh, Labor Day through October, September, October is the opportune time to, to bring plants in. It's kind of the last chance. So we bring them in then. We harden them off or get them acclimated or used to our climate. And they'll actually, they'll actually get cold and go dormant to be at, at, on our cycle. And so we order enough to get through winter because once winter hits, you really should not be shipping plants from a different climate to here. It, sh it stuns them. It shocks them. They go, to, they go into transplant shock. And so that's when they, that's just not fair to the gardener, to the homeowner that's buying that. You know, you don't, you want, you want plants that are used to our cycle, gone, used to our climate, goes into that. And so there's a time, wind, September, October is that window. And so we're clearing things out now so that we can start shipping things then. And that's why you're hearing some, and this is all the mountain folks. You're going to see the same thing. It's going to be, if you're tuned in from Sedona, from Flagstaff, Williams, you're going to see your garden center there ha have a seasonal kind of clearance, clear things out. In Prescott, Arizona, we happen to call it a monster monsoon sale. I don't know why, because usually it's raining by now. And so we've just been doing this for decades and it just works. It's a, it's kind of a, plus it rolls off the tongue. It just sounds better. There's nothing wrong with the plants. Don't be afraid to go, oh, it's the last one. No, no, it's the last one of the crop and there's no more behind it. We're not bringing more in. Plants are not like a manufacturing thing. You can't just hit a button and 10 more comes out the other end of the machine. This is like three years later. It takes three years to grow a nice Rosa Sharon. It's, it, so we've got a plan three years from today, three years back to, to guesstimate how many we think we're going to sell. What color is going to be popular? What sizes? Should it be a five gallon, two gallon, one gallon? What size should it be? Because it's going to take a long time to get that crop rotation to come through. And so this is just that last one or two, or maybe it had a broken branch. It just clip, clip it off and it wasn't as perfect as the last bunch, but by itself in the landscape, it's going to thrive and be beautiful. So don't be afraid. And now is a, just a tremendous time to plant. It's a peak time. It's, it's, I would say it's better than fall is for planting like the East coast or Midwest says, I think in the mountains of Arizona, monsoon is the time for planting. This is our best season for having plants root out, establish well before winter hits. And then they go dormant and they just kind of wake up next spring, just, just with new growth and vigor, especially things you want like privacy screens. You want to get bigger growth trees, Things you want to have a lot of growth to get the roots under them now. So next spring, you really grow faster. Wait, it's, it, now is better than planting them in spring. Okay, that's it. We've got Lisa Waters Lane coming in for her segment right after this. Waters Garden Companion Plants for August are Radio Red Salvias, Trumpeting Vine, and Butterfly Bush. Monarch and Swallowtail Butterflies flock to Waters Butterfly Bush with spectacular 8-inch flowers filling the yard with fragrance and beauty. Heat, drought, wind only make this shrub bloom more. Tough enough to grow in clay, but hardy enough to shine in containers. With so many colors to choose, every yard should have at least two. You'll only find impressive butterfly bush at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding with a few Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Elisa Waters Lane. We give this segment to her just to share us, get another insight, another set of eyes and ears, another set of a gardener's experiences, lifetime of just enrichment of the soil, of the plants of the soul. <laughs> Lee, my wife, Lisa Waters Lane. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. Yes. Good to be back. So it is. We do. I, the, the the studio smells beautiful. I gather you're gonna show some flowers, <laughs> some some stinky stuff off. I thought you were gonna say the studio smells. I'm like, well, it's been kind of muggy, dear. <laughs> you do not smell. Even when you smell, you don't smell, my dear. Unlike I can myself. Smell myself. Yeah, well, maybe you're used to yourself. Mm. That's that's wrong. That's a wrong path to take on the airwaves. Just okay. kind of pass it and move we'll pass on it. to other yeah. things. Yeah. Sure. So 
Um, have you been talking about the monsoon sale? I, I mentioned it uh, just before this, just kind okay. of the season, the seasonal changes. But let's mm -hmm. get your what? What do you see? Well, in in kind of the department that I run, which is the perennials and the annuals. Yeah. So we've had quite a few perennials um, that we're marking down that are still nice, great perennials, and you still have plenty of time to plant these guys and get them out there. So definitely worth checking out. And then the annuals are also on sale, and everybody's like, eh, is there enough time? Two yes. three months. It's tons of time. <laughs> what are you talking about? There is. And we have a lot of really nice. We've got portulacas and vinca yeah. and pintas, um, angelina, angelonias. So lots of really nice annual flowers, seasonal, one season flowers that you can put in now. Um, that's still the hummingbirds love, the bees love, the butterflies love, and, and you can enjoy them too. So I keep, I've had a couple of folks ask me, especially after the class last week, Ken, do you have, when are, when are the pansies coming in? When are the mums going to get, when are the, the fall crops? So we mm -hmm. get a little cool last, there's like a, yeah. just a chill in the air and people are like, okay, that's it. It's fall now. We're going for it. And uh, so what should I tell them? So uh, I spoke with our grower just the other day. So the first load of mums, a uh, gallon and four inch size will be coming in the first week in September. So okay, what, so about two a weeks. week, two weeks out? Yeah, maybe uh, 10 days, I don't know, whatever that is. Right. So the first group will be four coming days. in. Four days, that's like, September's like not even a week away. Oh my gosh. Where, <laughs> it's going where fast. August go? I don't know. Uh, and then pansies and violas and some of those uh, kind of cool season veggies, probably a little bit more third week in September, I'd okay. say. Um, yeah. The first crops are out there. They're not quite showing colors. So probably about four That's weeks That's one out. too. So folks should know we're famous for our Indian summers. It's really easy to be tricked into, oh, it's fall now. And then it goes yeah. right back to 90 degrees. <laughs> you buy your first set of pansies when it's just the first set of cool, it's going to get hot again and it right. can vaporize those cool. They like it cool. The cool mm -hmm. fall winter plants, they want it to be cool, not hot. Right. And so it's really easy to get tricked oh, yeah. into buying too early and then you're struggling to keep them watered. You're going, yeah. what's going on? I thought I was a gardener and it's not you. Mm -hmm. You were sold the wrong plant too soon and you're, you're going to struggle. All of us are. Yeah. And so wait until September to really put most of those things in when it, September will be a little cooler. October, it's definitely mm -hmm. fall. It's just gorgeous. It's what yeah. we live for that right. mid to end of mid September through, through, mid November. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful here. And those kind of plants love that season. Right. So don't be tempted to buy yeah. a plant. Just because you can early. buy pumpkin spice latte at Starbucks <laughs> does not mean it's time to put your, your, right. your, uh, your pansies, pansies in. in. Or buy but dragons. Yeah. You could probably do those. You oh, got yeah. some of those coming or, or... Uh, we've got some in now. Oh, there we go. They're not on the monsoon sale, but well, they're sure pretty and you can sure put them out now. But Point being, yeah, we, you got some time to plant those fall things, but you still have a lot of time to enjoy those summer yeah, flowers too. And true. the pricing is very good on them. Yeah. Uh, so enjoy it. Plant them and enjoy When they're them. like, what are they, 20, 30, 40, 50% off? What are they? Keep going. No. <laughs> I just want to look. I should know these things. Right now, most of them are 50, 50 for the off. annuals. Okay. Um, so so you, you're halfway through the season, but you bought them for half price. Yeah. And you can enjoy the last half of the season with these plants. So go for it. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. But we are still getting some new plants and new perennials in. Yeah, so here. I brought in a couple today to kind of look at. Now, these first two are great hummingbird attractors. So most people are familiar with the Salvia gregii. Um, and I brought this one in because this is just a real pretty purple one. This is the ignition purple. That is pretty. Uh, we goodness. had them earlier in the season, and they kind of got a little hard to find, and now they're back in. And uh, just a pretty, pretty plant. Does well in containers, does well in the ground. Takes, takes full, full sun. sun. Yeah. It, yeah. E it can even take some shadier spots yeah. in the yard, too, and still bloom very proficiently. I don't know what color that is. I'm trying to I'm look at the camera. This is where you really purple. want to be tuned in to the podcast or so the vod, <laughs> video cast of this or YouTube, whatever. But this is, it's not purple. It's not, 
It's not violet. It's some unique color. They call it Vibe Ignition Purple. Vibe Ignition. It's got a vibe to it. I don't know why. <laughs> So this other salvia I brought in. So this is a newer salvia. This is skyscraper orange. Um, still in that salvia family, which means it's very uh, deer, javelina, yeah. bunny resistant. But it's got a little bit different bloom to it. So this one's the orange one. It's kind of a um, almost pinky peach. I'd almost call it salmon. peach. I would it call actually it looks salmon. darker. Yeah. But it's a little bit, the blossom's different on it. It's got a fuller yeah. blossom to it. I can't quite explain it. Like a soybean or, or a, a, soybean. It's a bigger, bigger, it's got a bigger head to it. It does. We actually have this planted in a dark pink one, I yeah. think. In a pot. Uh, we tried it in a pot this year. So Probably. this is zone seven to 10. Uh, so it's definitely going to want that little bit warmer spot in your yard up against the wall. Uh, but it's a new variety. They've come out this year. It does come in a few different colors. Right now we have the orange. I just thought it was really pretty. It gets big I, too. I find it gets, yeah, ours is easily three feet tall. And yeah. I've trimmed it back a couple of times. I planted it last spring. It's been rotating flowers mm -hmm. right on through. It's it never has. even thought about stopping blooming. Yeah. It's been real consistent. Uh, and it's been just a, a beautiful. And I find the bumblebees. Mm. There's like a really revitalization of a bum bumblebees disappeared for a while. And yeah. now they're back. And they really, really like this new variety of salvia. Mm -hmm. They just can't stay away. It is very, very pretty. We bumblebees got... are interesting, I notice. Yeah. They're scared of you. I don't like, like them. You'll go up to the plant and they go, whoa. <laughs> they, they fly away. Whereas humming or honeybees. They don't. They're going, get yeah. out of my way. I'm coming. Hey, hey I'm busy. Watch out. You, they don't even see you. Mm -hmm. Bumblebees are like, I'm out of here. I'll come back. When no <laughs> one's here. They're like skittish or something. It's weird. That's true. Anyway. Hmm. Now I'm going to have to go out and observe nature. Be trivia. That's, that's, <laughs> there's no science to this. It's just something I've seen in our yard over this, this plant, the salvia. Because they're all over it. They're they're over the uh, uh, mimosas as well. So yeah. they really like the top that flower in that silk tassel or mimosa mm -hmm. tree. Mm -hmm. I love that. Great pollinators. They we are. still need our pollinators out there. So that's good. There's Beautiful another plant. one I didn't bring over. They call it pink pong salvia. Pink pong. Oh, yeah. It's got a big a ping pong it's size. It's got a well. It's not real. I don't know why they call it that name. Somebody would ask these growers. Well, you just they bored? bored. There was tequila involved. <laughs> Something's up. I don't know. <laughs> Late night. Yeah. They should have been in bed. But they call it pink pong. And it's definitely, the blossom's very, very similar. That nice full blossom, very pink. Um, it's like a zone eight. So great for those people in Dewey, Spring Valley. Oh, yeah. the, um, Camp Verde. Yeah. Out, out there, Cornville. Right. Sedona. Uh, Sedona. Yep. Yeah. So just pretty ones that we still have coming in. Do we have time for one more? I think so. Okay. So this one is, I think, a Rebecca, which I know I've been showing a lot of Rebeccas, but I thought this one was really pretty. They call it August Flame is what this one is called. Almost like pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> You're just going to get it in a flower. So this is the Rebecca, which is a nice perennial. They're getting very animal Party resistant. This yeah, is like yeah. Zone, some crazy cold. Yeah. Because really well. And it's got really fuzzy, scratchy leaves. So most of your critters are going to leave it alone. Like not going to mess with it. Yeah. yeah. But it's got just a really nice, um, almost butterscotchy. I would call it butterscotch. What would you call it? I'm a man. I've only got seven <laughs> crayons in my box. You got 64 of them, but I would call it orange. Okay. With a red center. I don't know. It's pretty. Anyways, yeah. you got to come check these out because we have a lot of good bargains, but we also have a lot of pretty new stuff Brands still coming of, in. The new stuff is coming in. Mm -hmm. And so that's great. Lisa, thank yeah. you for those uh, summer flowers. So, can Lisa Lane, them come to the gardeners. Be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website, podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Hi, Lisa here with the plants of the week and our lavender chiffon hibiscus. This hardy variety is one of the longest blooming, most prolific shrubs showing off massive four-inch lavender flowers all summer long. This stately bush likes to show off, and all for $39. But wait, there's more. These pretty shrubs come back again next year with even more stunning beauty. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love stunning hibiscus, they love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. 
Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. And we are back in the studio. A beautiful thing about having a studio right here at your garden center is I've got a dear friend, someone that I've learned to respect her talent, artistic dance abilities, her business acumen. Carrie Hughes is my dance partner. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you, Ken, for having me today. Yeah, so yes. Just kind of, this is the weekend for Dancing for the Stars. It is here. They partnered me with you and I together. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we bring a high energy. We high do. That's right. Yeah, we are a perfect <laughs> match. That's for sure. <laughs> I would agree with that. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. tell folks about yourself, mm -hmm. just you, how long you've been here. I know you live out in Dewey, yes. you're real estate, you have mm -hmm. venues, all kinds of stuff. You got, I, I wear many hats. Everything. I know I don't know either. Sometimes I don't know how to get stuff done, but you no, know, I have a lot of gifts and talents that I like that I have been given from God and um, being involved with the community. But dancing is my my passion, and I've been dancing since I was three. Really? Been, yes, performing at the Prescott uh, Fine Arts here since um, the age 17. So, um, and then Dance with the Stars, my seventh year Seven veteran years. yes yeah. and um every single season you've danced i've been invited back and i'm just yeah. so grateful and who is your favorite dance partner so far for season seven, I'll just beat that. Well, just hello, <laughs> Mr. Gardner himself. Yes, Mr. Ken Lane. There we go. Yes, of course. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You know, we're very compatible together, and the same as for you, as is both be being business people. Um, we put a lot of time into this, yeah. and a lot of energy, and we still we have to keep our businesses going and right. our families taken care of. Yeah, so it's a lot that goes into this. So, yeah. but with you, it's been very uh, simple. You know. What? Okay. Yeah, what? Well, I mean, it's, it's not hard work at all. We're having so much fun. And yeah, I've been telling people, fun. we actually laugh more than we dance. We do, yeah, that's actually true. That's <laughs> yeah, actually no. true. Right? I love yeah. it. I love it. So yeah. what kind of business? You said you're in business. Yeah. Now's your chance. This is broadcast throughout northern Arizona. Okay. So tell them just what okay. you do and how to get a hold of you. Do you have websites or any of that kind of stuff? So, or? you know, I basically word of mouth, but we do okay. own Cherry Creek Ranch venue and events out in Dewey off of 169 and Foothill. So our main thing is weddings, but we do any kind of event. Um, um, that, that you want to have proms and um, celebrations of life. We do Bible studies. I teach dance out there. Yeah. And my husband is the mayor of Dewey. Yeah. And we have a five-year-old daughter, you, you Bristol. Right out there. Uh, and, and Bristol. Take Mr. Hughes, right? John Hughes. Yes, he is the mayor. Yes, the mayor. And um, love them both dearly. And they're very supportive of me as well. Um, and I, of them, whatever activities we are. But I'm also a realtor um, in the state of Arizona. I've been doing that for a long time. A choreographer. Um I'm, I'm very heavily involved with politics. So again, like I am very involved with the community. So I'd love yeah. to, I always love to give back, yeah, you know? That's good. Yes. You do. Yes. Seven, you're, you're doing all that mm -hmm. and you've been dancing for the boys and girls club yes. for seven years. That's seven years. Amazing. I, I know. I can't believe I, it's been I've that long. Been once and I, I think I've, I've burned out all of my contacts, all of my business partnerships. <laughs> Everyone's going to tune in uh, this weekend mm -hmm. all that's around it. the country. That's They're right. Tune in to watch me dance because mm -hmm. yeah, I know that guy from Arizona. He's got a garden center. That's I, right. I got yeah, a garden center in Manhattan or or uh, Florida. Or, sure. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, we've all been invited to kind of watch me dance. Live stream. Good. The industry is going to get together here uh, in three weeks, mm -hmm. and then awesome. you're probably going to have a, a drink over at the bar and and, and mock me uh, to, to the rest of the. <laughs> <laughs> no, you made me look good. No, you do look uh, good. Yeah, yeah you do. You. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's been. Fun. I mean, I look forward to every time we get together. So even if, yeah, I do. Yeah, it's I fun. Too. Mm -hmm. I do yep. too. Uh, we had dance rehearsals this last midweek mm -hmm. yep, by college and we had our act together. Yes, we did. Yeah, so dress rehearsals. Mother, so. Oh, yeah, we did. Actually, they wanted us to do it again. Really? Yeah, that's what they said. They go, remember we did that? They go, will you guys do it again? Oh, because yeah, you guys are uplifted, upbeat. Oh, good. We love the music. Yeah. yeah I so, missed yeah. that part. We bring it. I think I was beating all the plants ready. It's a forest on stage. <laughs> yeah, so you yes. got gardens around. I know. There's you bushes everywhere. A forest. <laughs> so you've got a daughter. So yes, Miss Bristol. Us about, tell us about your family. So, well, uh, John or whatever. Yeah, John. Um, We've been uh, married for uh, 29 years, I believe it is. Yes. Yeah, really? <laughs> he tells me. <laughs> Yeah, but now yeah, we um went to high school together here at Prescott High. Wow. Yes, and um, yeah, we've had a great, great uh, life together. God's been uh, blessed us very a lot. And uh, with Bristol, she's a little pistol, as you all know. But um, she is. She she's a dancer. Dance yes, yeah. she does. That's in her blood. Yeah, yeah, and she's spicy too. And she's got energy. And 
I'm like, whoa, it's a <laughs> Carrie Jr. all over again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but she, she loves yeah. to when we're practicing. She loves to come down and go. <gasps> yeah. Dragon Ball. What? Are, what like, can I can I use those props? That's yes. Yeah, so I do her cartwheels. She it. stops us and. She's drawn to. It. Ken, watch my cartwheel. You know. <laughs> so you want to share anything about her dance or her style or music or uh, that well, kind of stuff or what? What? What can people expect? You're going to expect, that. you're going to be very entertained. Um, our music, well, it's with Pitbull and, and JLo. And um, it's talking about being on the floor, dancing on the floor, you know, bringing it. Um, a lot of us that are professionals, you know, we we live, we die on the floor. Seriously, yeah. we do, you know. And um, uh, whatever it takes, we uh, we do it. But yeah, um, a lot of energy. Uh, I like to use the stage all over the floor, oh, you know. The, yes. The height, I, yes, I love width, ups and downs. Width, and, width. That's right. Everything. <laughs> we use it. You know, we use all of our sources there. So, and then with your your props you brought in, um, I think it's amazing bringing all that. I really like it. And they so, got to wait for the truck at the end. I did not realize dancing was so physically demanding. So it is. I'm pretty fit, guy. It really I, is. I'm, yes, I'm not, you are. I'm mm -hmm. just, I got it together. I'm mm -hmm. in the garden center. At the peak of the garden center season, I can host, I can run or have 25,000 steps. I don't know how many miles that is, but it's all on this two acre area. And so I thought, oh, I got this. This would be easy. I'd do this in my sleep. No, you're huffing and puffing. You're sweating. You're mm -hmm. kinda, you're, it's a workout. Yeah, it I is. I lost a couple yes. pounds just having you work right. out and practice mm -hmm. and yes. get it going. So. Yep. yep. No, it's great. And it's very healthy for you, too. You know? Yeah. Very much cardio yes. and mm -hmm. whatever else. Dancing brings nice. joy. Know. You know, it, it does. does. It brings happiness. Let's you know? Start. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 So if they want to contact you. If Let's they want to venue or sure. a real estate thing. So I know you've sold a couple big, big things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they can how either would someone reach out and you could just totally, I think this is okay to talk about you commercially. I know you just love to give, give, give. But yes. Yeah. I think the community gives back when you give. So Absolutely. It's okay to mm -hmm. talk about yourself. Yeah. So like I said, if you want to get a hold of me, you can go on our Facebook page. Um, we are really referral of the mouth with word of mouth, which works out great. And um, you're always going to get 100% uh, customer. You know, you're, I mean, just, we're just amazing. People really, sometimes don't even rent from us because of our venue. They go, I'm going to be here because of you and what you are providing your service, yeah. you know, and um, we just have a really good time. And I like to make sure everybody has a smooth as possible event. Uh, but you can call me on our phone number. We're also on evective.com through the website. And you can find our ranch there and click on that. So Cherry Creek Nick Ranch. ranch. Mm -hmm. Is it dot com or just Cherry Creek it, Ranch? Cherry Creek, just Cherry Creek Ranch. Yes. Okay. Dewey. Mm -hmm. So we've been practicing in her my venue. Venue. Yes. Which is about the same size as the stage of, yes. of Yeppa Pie College. Mm -hmm. the, the, Jim and Linda Lee performed the big one. Right. And so it's actually bigger than that. We just took a, a bay of that. Mm -hmm. And so how many people can you host? What's the largest gathering you've had at that at that ranch? So the largest we had is about 750. Now that oh was with gosh. a tent outside and, you know, additional yeah. tables and chairs. Um, but inside we can sit seat uh, 200, sit down dinner. Um, that's a little tight, but a lot of people like, we don't, you know, we're family, you know, yeah. we're here. But um, generally, you open the we open doors, I guess. Oh, absolutely. It's, yes, it's we get the like... big doors. They open, so it has outdoor patio seating, you know, as well as yeah. indoor. Yeah, so, uh, um whatever your, your event may be. So we can accommodate anything. Yeah. And there's so much potential out there. So if you want, you know, I love whatever the how you years. decorated. Oh, I thank mean, you. The venue is, it's a ranch. Mm -hmm. so it's got a cowboy Western theme, right, which right. you'd expect in Dewey. Perfect. Yep. But then you've gone, you've personalized it. To where yes. Add a little right touches here and there. And you yes. got the right saddles and you got the right, the bathrooms are even, Thank you. People beautiful. talk about the bathrooms. Thank they're you. Beautiful. Oh <laughs> they're, they're clean. I don't I... Leave. That's weird. <laughs> it's always been important to me. Bathrooms are always <laughs> important. You know, it says, it says a lot about a person. So, yeah. you know, but yeah, thank so you. So share with folks, um, Dancing with the Stars. Mm -hmm. When is it this weekend? It's performing. Yes, one it last, is. Uh, pitch so yeah, folks, Dancing for the donate, Stars. So it's going to be on Friday, the 25th. Starts at 7 o'clock. And then we also have the big red carpet premiere on Saturday, the 26th. That also starts at seven o'clock, but that is when you come in your um, dress and press. So you're gonna be—it's like suit and tie. 
So, yeah. yeah and we want everyone to uh, sponsor, uh, donate, vote, whatever you can do, buy tickets. It, it's a fundraiser yes, they got a few for seats the Boys left. and Girls Club. They do, yes. And all and the proceeds go to the kids. Dancingforthestars.net. Mm -hmm. That's how you can get, get yes. involved or donate or whatever. Vote, donate for Ken and Gary because we're trying to raise money for them. Yes, so absolutely. A prize for that. Yes. Carrie Hughes. Dancing to the Stars and Cherry Creek Ranch. Thanks for being here. And Thank you for having me. Yes. Why you get back so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Be right back. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to the Mountain Gardener. Hi, it's Waters with the plants of the week and our gold flame honeysuckle. Wonderfully fragrant. These blooms are in full color right now and will stay that way until the first frost of October. These pink and gold blooms are irresistible to hummingbirds and butterflies alike. Excellent as a quick ground cover, but robust enough to climb vertical structures and fences, all for under $37. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love blooming vines, they love to shop. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So there's a beautiful moth flying around the garden. It looks like a hummingbird, but it's not. The wings look like a hummingbird, but it's got a real long proboscis, doesn't have the same eyes. It's got a kind of a gray to brown marking to it. It's a very pretty moth. It's called a sphinx moth or hummingbird moth. Now, the hummingbird moth is a great pollinator. It goes around taking flowers and pollen. To get, it's a good, good guy. But the larva turns into a green caterpillar called the, the tomato green tomato hornworm. So that great big worm that gets in the garden and basically strips uh, tomatoes, peppers, can get on several things, but it's tomato worm. It's kind of it's famous for, but and, and they'll they can they can take a plant down to the stubs in days if you if you blink, they'll strip it clean. So and you'll see just brown little poop marks on the foliage, you'll see leaves gone, and they're hard to spot because they take on the same color as the thing that they're eating. And so tomato worms, when you're seeing the sphinx moth, that hummingbird moth float around the gardens, you should be diligent and keep an eye on that first bit of foliage that uh, gets damaged. Get on it and, and treat that. So that worm is very, that caterpillar is very easy to treat. You simply spray your the foliage of your plant with an organic called BT. B is a boy, T is a top. BT. It's an organic. Basically, it, it it causes a caterpillar to stop eating, and they starve to death. So they'll immediately stop stripping your plants. Literally, I've seen tomato horn, hornworms eating jalapeno peppers, not the foliage, the pepper. Come on, now that's an insult. That's not going to happen. I'm going to deal with you if that's the case. I'm going to spritz the foliage with BT. They're going to come out that evening, start eating. They're going to get sick to their stomach, and they're just going to hang on the vine and finally drop off from starvation. So keep an eye. Just be aware. You, you, it is time for them to show up. And so I want my friends. Hi, my name's Ken. We're just friends. We're talking over the back fence. And these are things I've seen in the past that you probably want to kind of be aware of. And so just kind of kind of watch that. Uh, classes. We've got several really good garden classes that are coming up. I mean, this weekend it's gardening for newcomers. And I think Lisa's going to teach that one. Just this is what zones are we? When are frost dates? What can you plant and when? How are we different than other places? Next week, I'm teaching that one. It's the top 10 trees and how to plant them. These are the big boys. Some evergreens. I'm sure I'll mix evergreens and, and maybe leafy things. But And then climbers and covers in the landscape. The vines, ground covers, uh, the different types you're seeing bloom now, whether it's up a barbed wire fence, up a chain link, up a up a block, just up a, up a hillside. We'll cover those. Then easy to grow mountain plants. What are the easiest ones? I don't know where to start. Start with these. They're super easy and it keeps going. So take a look at all of those at watersgardencenter.com. Right on the very front, there's a classes button. They're always free. They're always on Saturday. 
and they're at 930. They go for about an hour. Last week, we went for an hour and a half because the students were really into it. They just had a lot of great questions. And I, let, I let them go when they wanted, but they just had a lot of great questions. And so I, I kind of hung out, just answered those. So but generally about an hour, hour and 15, something like that. And then you're gone. You can uh, go shop for gardens, plants, or head home and have another latte, whatever you want. So throughout the week, Lisa and I camp camp out here at Waters Garden Center. We love talking to fans of the show. If you if you like this show, like it, subscribe it, kind of kind of let us know that you're listening, tuned in, and what you like the most about it. We'd love that. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to the Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoy this show and would like to hear more, please subscribe to The Mountain Gardener wherever you like to listen to podcasts. And if you'd like even more garden tips, tricks, and helpful advice, please check out my website at watersgardencenter.com for classes, videos, and more, or my online garden center at top10plants.com. Throughout the week, Lisa and I can be found here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott.